More than 43 million people, or about 15% of the nation's population, rely on private domestic wells for drinking water. In Arizona, there are more than 100,000 domestic wells providing water to an estimated 120,000 households, or about 5% of the state's population. Prior to drilling a new well, or deepening or modifying an existing well, a homeowner must file a Notice of Intent to Drill with the Arizona Department of Water Resources, or ADWR. Notice of Intent forms, or NOIs, are available on the ADWR website, and they can be downloaded in PDF formats. The well driller will typically work with the homeowner to obtain and complete the NOI forms. Details to be provided on the form include naming the well driller, location of the well on the land, and the proposed well depth and construction details. Some well drillers who are authorized by the ADWR can file for and complete NOI forms electronically using the internet. There is a fee required for processing NOIs at the county level before they can be submitted to the ADWR. The fee amount and the time required for the county office to review the NOI differs from county to county. The well driller that you have chosen to drill your well will know what the time and fee requirements will be for your county. In this video, we will be drilling to deepen an existing well and then replacing a pump in another older well. What we're doing here right now is uh, beginning the, the steps to trip out of the hole, as we call it. Uh, the drill pipe is down to the bottom of the well. If the borehole has been completed to a depth of 400 feet. And uh, now they're going to, as we call it, trip out, bring all the drill pipe out of the well, and uh, get an open borehole to run the case. This is a pretty modern drill rig with uh, roller spinners to uh, unscrew the pipe. There's not a lot of manual labor involved. Each one of these 20-foot sections of uh, four and a half inch diameter drill pipe has to come out and get laid down onto this rack before um, we can begin to run the casing in the well. I should explain here that uh, this particular project was the deepening of an existing well. It's not uh, the drilling of a brand new one. This well was 300 foot deep, cased uh, with eight inch steel casing. Now uh, it's been drilled down another 100 feet to 400 feet, and uh, that's what we'll uh, case in line and call it a deepened well. It takes very close coordination between the well driller and the helper to uh, do these steps. You can see the size of the machinery, the weight, the steel. There's lots of opportunities for pinched and smashed fingers. Each drill pipe as it comes out gets a, a thread protector screwed onto the bottom of it so that the threads of that drill pipe don't get damaged. The driller is now preparing to getting just about to get the last joint of drill pipe out which will have the um, drill hammer we call it. It's a downhole pneumatically operated hammer. Just, we just saw the uh, downhole hammer reach the surface and they're taking off the last section of drill pipe right now. And as soon as that's laid down, then they'll grab a hold of the downhole hammer that did the drilling and pull it out of the ground. Now they're opening up the uh, working table on the drill rig to uh, pull the hammer. You see it's much bigger in diameter than the drill pipe and the diverter pipe that was hanging on the, there to divert the flow of water away. Then the, the tungsten carbide inserts in the bottom of the bit do the actual cutting of the rock and sand and gravel and so on. And as the bit turns to the right, around and around, uh, that hammer portion of it goes up and down. You can see about an inch and a half space there that the bit can travel through. So it hammers up and down as it turns to the right and cuts uh, the borehole. Now the next step will be to install the uh, well casing. I guess we can sell it. What we're going to do is measure the depth to water in the well. 
and see how far down that is below the top of the casing. The wire that he's using uh, has a uh, measurements on the length of it to tell him how deep it is to water, and there's a little meter. And the driller is saying it's 77 feet from the top of the casing to the top of the water table. PVC well screen, factory slotted well screen. They're held together with a uh, cord that slips into a groove in each piece of casing, and that allows them to be put together and possibly taken apart if necessary. But it's a very tight seal. Each of these 20-foot sections of PVC well casing has a great number of slots per inch or per foot in them, and it allows a lot of water to come into the well, but yet it holds out the coarse uh, sands and gravels. And the 40-foot of factory slotted screen will be on the very bottom of the well, and then the submersible pump will fit down inside this casing but higher up than the slots so that the water has to come in and go up to get to the pump. That prevents it from uh, pumping sand. This is six inch diameter PVC well casing. And they come in 20 foot sections as each one is assembled. We can see the groove on the bottom of the blank, first piece of blank casing, and that's where that uh, cord fits one into inside the other and prevents them from coming apart. This is the first section of blank casing that will go into the well and there'll be many more of them to follow. We're just about to uh, break the well seal of this uh, domestic house well and begin pulling the pump. We've diagnosed it that it does have some downhole problems and it's necessary to pull it to repair and replace it. Always have to be very careful during this first stage of coming out of the well to make sure that the wire is tight here around the uh, pipe and doesn't want to travel back down the well. As the pump comes up out of the well, we wind up the submersible cable to keep it clean off the ground. So now the first joint's only about five feet long. This device called a foot jack is going to hold the pump from going back down the well while we uh, take off each section of pipe. It has to be properly adjusted and set so that it holds the pipe vertically. The first section was inch and a half, the rest of it's one and a quarter. And um, it's pretty typical of a domestic well installation, one and a quarter, one and a half, either one will work quite fine. Now either that or some wells are hung, the pipe is, the pump is hung on PVC pipe, but this one happens to be on galvanized. Now as each section of pipe is removed, it's a very good likelihood that it's full of water, so water is going to splash out the bottom of the pipe each time as we unscrew it. Oh, there is no water in this joint pipe. This device right here is the bleed back device because this is a hydropneumatic water tank where air and water are in contact with each other. Each time the pump is shut off, the water in this pipe bleeds back. Uh, in this case, it would have been about 28 feet worth of bleed back. The water pours out there, and then every time that the pump comes on again, it pushes that much air up the pipe and into this tank over here. It's a hydropneumatic tank with a bleed back. If the system should get to, uh, make too much air and put too much air into the tank, this air volume control pot here will release the excess air and keep the uh, ratio of air and water in the tank at about 50%, air and 50% water. This one's going to be a wet one. Yeah, you're going to spray right at me. Yeah. See, each pipe has to be drained to water every time it comes out. 
we've just come to a splice in the submersible cable wire that was put in uh, 14 and a half, uh, 14 joints of pipe down in the well. And uh, this is where the pump was last uh, lowered uh, after the well was deepened. It was set uh, to this depth, and then when the well was drilled deeper and deepened, it was set that much lower, so they added new cable to the top. We're probably going to take this cable out and totally replace it with new cable to get rid of this splice that might have been below the water table. And there's often a place that we find trouble where water gets into that joint. That connection. Now I think this is the joint of pipe that we've been looking for. This is the one that has the pump hanging on the end. This first piece you see coming out here at the top is called the torque arrester. It's designed to keep the pump and pipe centered in the middle of the PVC well casing. That's a little down inside the well. We're going to cut the uh, pipe wrap tape off of it right now, but I can tell by the, seeing the motor leads that the pump is just a little bit below here. There's evidence here on this torque arrestor of some biomass inside the well, which means that uh, we've had some coliform bacteria uh, in place down there that uh, we're going to deal with when we put the new uh, pump and motor in by chlorinating the well very strongly, do a shock treatment of the well. And here's the pump coming out of the well. That's the pump on top and the motor on the bottom. A little bit uh, iron stained, but it's a stainless steel pump and motor. We're going to mount it and set it down inside this little pad to hold it upright while we take the top joint of pipe off of it. Right, we've gotten the old pump and motor out of the well now, and I've over here I've collected up the new equipment that we're going to put in, the replacement parts. This is the new submersible motor set here in the stand. This is the new submersible pump that I'm going to put in. It's the same, exact same model as the one that we took out, and uh, they have to be assembled first before they can be put in the well and bolt it together with four stainless steel nuts. I record the serial numbers and the make and model of this equipment before we put it down in the well. Now it takes just a little bit of a, a twist with a wrench and a screwdriver to tighten up the four nuts. And when the pump is down inside the well, this is where the water enters and starts up the pump. This is the submersible motor here below the pump. It's always below the pump. The water in the well comes up past the motor, help keeping it cool. It enters the intake here, and the impellers of the pump push it up to the top. The next part I have to do is put this uh, cable guard over the submersible wires that come from the motor and I put that in place by pulling these wires up against there and then I have two screws to put into these holes down here. What we're doing now is uh, uh, preparing the spool of new wires, new submersible cable. We're lowering it into the rack on the truck so that uh, we can spool it off as it goes down the well. What we're doing here now is we're preparing to uh, make the sub uh, submersible uh, splices of the motor leads to the submersible cable. This is right, uh, just take place just above the pump in the well, but uh, we're stripping the ends off of the new submersible cable and we'll be preparing the ends of the motor leads as they come from the factory and putting heat shrinks on there and taping them all up securely because this has to be a watertight uh, connection for electricity to flow through. We have put the butt connectors on the, uh, each of the end of the submersible cable wire. Now we're going to connect them up color to color to the submersible motor leads and crimp them together. I'm going to start with the black wire first. Dwayne's going to crimp that down. The next step I'm going to do is to wrap this rubber tape around the butt connector and bare copper wire segment. Two wraps followed by PVC tape 
And then once we've done that for each and every wire, we'll bring the heat shrink up and heat shrink this plastic, heavy plastic cover down over the top of each one of those connections. We'll go ahead and do the other three and then we'll heat shrink them all at once. He uses real heat. As he applies the heat to each one of those heat shrinks, they shrink up and they're rosin filled and I can see a little bit of rosin begin to ooze out of them. This makes it a very abrasive resistant uh, seal and contact on each one of the motor leads. Virtually guarantees no electrical leak to the water when the motor's running. All right, we're ready now to set the new pump and motor down into the well. It's all assembled, cleaned, ready to go. We've added the first joint of pipe. Now we begin the operation of wrapping up the first joint of pipe coming out of the pump. Then we're going to bring in this pump motor leads against the drop pipe and do a barber pole or type of wrap right up the well. This protects these motor leads from any kind of damage as the pump's going back in the well. This is the one we've been looking for. This is the last half section of pipe that's going in. We lay this down, the pump will be right back in the well where it was when we first started. This is the moment of closure when we put the pump back down in the well and land it. Ready to go. This video is one of a series of four, introducing you to basic aspects of your domestic water supply well. This video is the result of a collaboration between the University of Arizona Cooperative Extension Service, the Water Resources Research Center, and the Arizona Water Well Association. Funding was provided by the Water Sustainability Program of the Arizona Technology Research Initiative Fund from the University of Arizona Superfund Research Program and the Cooperative Extension Signature Program Initiative.